this, he literally doesn't say a joke. Not even once, he's like, I live in the valley, guys. You guys live in the valley? You know how valley girls are, right? The valley girls are like, ah! People just lose their fucking mind. Hey, welcome to Jokes Explained. I'm professional joke explainer Miles Anderson here to explain the jokes of the best comedians working today. So first up, we've got Chris D'Elia. Um, this guy gets a lot of hate. A lot of people don't understand his jokes. So I'm just going to explain why this guy's one of the funniest comedians working today. I think the worst gig I ever had was deep in the valley, like deep in the valley of Los Angeles. No, don't yell. It was, was okay. It was, I feel it was so deep in the valley. I feel like, you know how like the valley just like keeps, I feel like it keeps going. Like it never, like even if you get, to, if you're about to get to the end. So you can see how he uses repetitive words to make things funnier. Uh, deep in the valley. It's deep in the valley. It's just so deep in the valley. I don't think you guys get it. It's really deep in the, like that's super funny to just say this same thing over and over again. Um, it's actually so funny that sometimes uh, militaries use it as like a torture technique to get information out of people. They'll just repeat, 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 repeat until people go insane uh, with laughter. The edge of the valley, people will beat you there and be like, hey, we gotta make more valley, let's do this. <laughs> Hurry up, put up, you know. But yeah, the valley's really big. Put up a uh, that's why that store. joke is just funny. The front part, we care, nobody goes in. Put up a lamps plus, do it, like. Fucking lamps plus. So this is a great opening bit to his uh, set here. Uh, the valley's really deep. Um, sometimes people will meet you in the valley before you get there. I mean, that's real. That's hilarious stuff to start on uh, in a comedy special like this. This is the best of Crystalia. Plus, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck that place, straight up. Like, what is? Yeah. What lamps plus what? You know? <laughs> Can I get lettuce there? No, fucking lamps plus what? Oh, more lamps? Fuck you, you're not even trying. You're not even fucking trying. Yeah, lamp, the lamps <laughs> plus only sells lamps. Um, why would they have lettuce there? That's kind of the dissonance he's working with uh, for that joke there. So lamps plus would not have lettuce. Uh, that's why the crowd uh, likes it so much, because why would they have lettuce? But this gig I played was like the, the worst, it was like this most rundown, shitty bar ever. Like, fuck a theater. This was a bar that was rundown and all boarded up and shitty. Like, it so he said, it's a rundown, shitty bar. And then he said, rundown, shitty bar again. Again, he's using the same language twice. He uses a lot of repetition to set up the punchline. It was the, like the only thing this bar sold was meth. Like, that's all it sold. <laughs> this is before Breaking Bad, before meth was popping, you know, all right? And by the way, okay, there's 14 people in this bar. 14 people, all right? You know how like sometimes, at least for me, it's hard to tell how many people are a group of people, right? Like I could be at Dodger Stadium and be like, this is either 50,000 people or 12 million people. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> My point is, is 14 people is very easy to tell, okay? Because it's, it's just 13 more than you, you know? Like, you just be like, one, 14, okay, okay, that's it. That's how many that is. Um, Sort of very loose uh, observations that he's making here. The crowd is loose, the show is loose, his language is loose, the jokes, the setups, everything's very loose. You know, it's very Los Angeles style to just sort of say stuff. Um, a lot of people that don't understand his comedy don't understand that a lot of people in California say things a lot of times. Um, you know, they go to Dodgers games, uh, they watch Breaking Bad, you know. Sometimes to understand someone from California, you have to be from California. I think this is why he's so funny. For and people in California. 12 of these people are at the bar, okay? They're not even fucking facing me, all right? They're just, 12 of these people are literally just lined up. Yeah, using the stool. Sitting at the, and they know, Best they know I'm know back there, you know? Stool. They're doing like a fuck you sit. Like, one of them was like that, even. Great physical bit. That's, me. I mean, that's funny. Like, that's, so that's, so we've cut to another clip now, because that was the, we just go back here. That was the punchline to that, uh, it was the worst like, game. one of them was like that. <laughs> and then, and one of them sitting there with kind of a curved back with a middle finger showing. Um, just such a good comedian. I highly recommend you guys check out that whole special because obviously they're cutting to a different special. Um, Chris has put out over 15 specials on Netflix since he started doing comedy over three years ago. At even. 
I live in LA. And he called me up and he was like, he lives in LA again. So he started off talking about how he lives in the valley. Uh, now he's talking about how he lives in LA. Again, People might think this is very specific jokes just for people from California, but I think if someone, you know, from Nebraska saw this, they would think. I live in LA. LA and he called me up and he was sick. like, hey man, enough's enough. I want you to meet my baby girl. She's four already. And we were coming out to LA. Are there any cool like hotels we could stay at? And I just spoke immediately. I said, nah, stay at the house. I didn't even mean it. I just like said it because like I heard my dad say it once growing up, you know? <laughs> You know how you do that? You're like, yeah, I'm an adult now. I even heard my dad's East Coast accent come out. I was like, yeah, you guys, come on over. It was like a fucking Olive Garden commercial or something. <laughs> yeah, when you hear your family, come on over. It's There's really cool. So a lot of comedians will draw from their life experience to make jokes. Um, so before, you know, Chris Dillia mentioned, sometimes he goes into the valley um, and sometimes he talks to his friends. So he's kind of drawing on a lot of these things that you know he he'll be doing in the previous couple decades of his life. He's kind of talking about experiences he's had. So he drives and he talks, um, which are relatable things to talk about on stage, which is really cool. There's unlimited breadsticks at the house. And he's doing a, an Italian impression, of course. It's, a, you can, I mean, some people might get offended by this. You know, the woke, woke police, you know, might get offended by making fun of Italians, but um, Italians have. Uh, have in 1999, they became a Caucasian race, um, so it's totally fine to make fun of those guys now. So Chris D'Elia obviously going after Italians because it's uh, really funny now. And they came over, and I fucking, that, I mean, that little girl was directly trying to affect how real I keep it on these streets, you know? <laughs> she was looking Love at me all cute and soft and shit. First of all, her name's Annika, which is like, that's so cute, fuck that, right? I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to keep it real and call this girl Annika? Fuck that, I'm gonna call her Rachel. That's a regular ass name. Funny joke, kind of risky for him to talk about or mention women, obviously, in his stand-up set, um, considering the legal problems he's been having, you know. Uh, I, I, I was, again, he's brave. He's a brave comedian. I mean, I would probably... Um, probably retreat from public life if I was him, but he's just out there telling jokes. Um, putting out specials, making waves. That's why he's one of the best. But you can't Fearless. call a four-year-old girl a different name. That would fuck her up for life. Imagine her talking to her dad later on, just like, hey, dad, excuse me, I have a question for you. Hey, dad, excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? Great, hey, where don't that dad, dad, can I talk to you for a second? Hey, dad, how come your friend that looks like uh, the guy from Sleepy Hollow? Why does he... <laughs> Dad, excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? Hey, Dad. Quickly Why the little girls adjust his ass crack like a couple times so there on stage. Don't, don't That's a funny joke. Me. I mean, I probably wouldn't touch my private parts on stage, but he's, he's talking about young he women, so. He did everything, including that. I guess he's right? getting excited. He did it like on the eighth day or some shit. <laughs> and on the eighth day, little girls will grab their pussies from behind. And even, even the disciples were like, whoa, already? Like, we could do that later. And he was like, it doesn't matter, it's what I thought of now. It's no, no order, we'll get them all done. I looked at him. Yeah, this stuff's still on YouTube, uh, this, uh, this comedy that he has, which again, just shows the power of how funny he is, uh, that he can be talking about uh, young women and, and, their, and their genitals. Um, even after everything that's happened, uh, YouTube, uh, Netflix, just partners partners in making sure this guy's comedy is not gone. You gotta separate the art from the artist sometimes, you know, and um, it's worth it. It's worth it with Chris, because he is a great artist. Looked at him, and this is what I Another said. Clip. I said. So that was the punchline of that other one. Um, his punchlines, they don't have the rhythm of a lot of normal comedians. Like normally, they, uh, uh, a regular comedian will say something really funny at the end of their, of their setups. Chris D'Elia just sort of wanders into another segment like we have here. The elevator. So, so now he knows what the rest of the sentence has to be about, right? And then I held eye contact and I said, where is it? <laughs> right? I did the noun first, which is how they do it in Spanish, right? That's how, that's how they do it in Spanish. Like instead of red car, they'll be like, car red, you know? <laughs> By the way, it's better the way they do it because we should know from jump what the thing is that you want to talk about, right? Like in Spanish, they'll be like, I want to talk about a car. Also, it's red and very fast, right? And we're like, all right, I got you from the beginning, you know? But in English, we're like, I'm going to mention something in a little bit. <laughs> but before I do, I'll have you know, it was red. And you're like, ooh, is it a dragon? 
Like, no, it's a car. Oh, that's disappointing. Go fuck yourself, right? So remember, that's what I said to him. I was like, you're using a lot of hyperbole in his jokes, obviously, here. Um, you know, if my friend mentioned they had something red and then uh, it turned out it was a car, I probably would have said, go fuck yourself. You know, it's a little bit aggressive, but um, Crystal Lee obviously turns that uh, exaggeration into just pure comedy gold here. Um, crowd, a little more subdued in this clip. Um, they probably aren't from California. It's like, the elevator. <laughs> Where is it? I shit you not, the guy goes like this. Eh, sorry, mate. I guess I'm just going to not understand what you're saying. Great so now I have to say it a fifth time. Now I got to be like, something else is going on here that I have no idea about, right? Maybe I don't know what words mean anymore. <laughs> Maybe I'm having a stroke, right? <laughs> But you laugh, but that's what having a stroke is like. You're pretty sure you know the words coming out of your mouth, but in actuality, what's coming out of your mouth is something like tarantula, 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 and half your face is numb. So I touched my face and I felt it, right? Obviously, that's a super funny joke uh, by uh, this master of comedy, but the real symptoms of a stroke are uh, quite severe. Um, you know, you'll, you'll start to feel numbness on part of your body. The side of your face will droop. Uh, you might smell burnt toast. Your family members hopefully will notice this in time and call the emergency response services to make sure that they can act quickly because during a stroke, um, time is of the essence and it's important to get medical attention as soon as possible. Um, if your family member says tarantula over and over again, uh, they're obviously just doing a really funny Crystalia bit and you guys should all just have a good laugh. And I was like, shit, I gotta change these words or something. So I started with the first word, elevator. And I was like, right away it clicked. I was like, oh, where's the lift? And the guy goes like this, I was right down there. Fuck him, okay? Fuck him, again, like really an, hostile an towards um, just sort of people around him. Uh, this is hi hyperbolic stuff. Obviously, he's not that crazy towards people in his life that aren't uh, young women. Um, he generally is a pretty nice guy. I haven't met him, but I've, I've on podcasts, he seems like a really cool guy. And uh, he is very funny on stage for some sure. Some shit. I was like, was I the bad guy the whole time? <laughs> some girl in a spotlight alone. He's a very just powerful like, father. I wish he'd come. <laughs> Whoa. <sighs> what did he even say there? I didn't even hear it. Let's go back a little bit. This is his opening line, so he's walking out on stage. What do you say? Some girl in a spotlight alone, just like, I wish he'd come. <laughs> <sighs> Meet me somewhere else. Risky jokes, considering, considering what has happened recently. <laughs> but funny Meet stuff. Meet me somewhere else. I love when they hit the same note twice at the end. Meet me somewhere <laughs> That's such a fuck you, you know? A lot of this joke is just what he looks like and sounds like. I mean, not a lot of words are happening here. Um, you just kind of, he's like Mr. Bean in this way. Um, you know, you just sort of laugh at, at what he looks looks like and is doing. It really is. You want um, that extra high note. But funny funny eyebrows sort of thing. You. you know what you want. Meet me somewhere. Oh, that's what you want, right? <laughs> Some dudes are like, meet me somewhere. Oh, and they're just like, fuck you. You don't get that last note. <laughs> Again, saying you to fuck you to another person in his life. It's obviously a joke. But girls, you can get at us like that. You really can. So that was a whole bit there. Um, I think this might need a little bit more explaining here. I just want to explain. That last note. The balls you got to do to do that shit. <laughs> so he just sort of laughs at his own, at his own uh, joke there at the end to sort of tie it all up. Um, Super experimental to do that. Uh, really confident guy to just, sometimes the crowd doesn't get it and you just gotta laugh at your own joke and uh, really let them know what, what's funny. But girls, you can get at us like that. You really can. Talking and about girls why, again. Right? Because as men, all we want in life, no matter what we do in our lives, the real reason we're doing it is to get you. That's what we want. No matter what we do, no matter what the, it is, whatever it is. Again, risky stuff. Uh, his, you know, I think his lawyers said it's totally fine that he has this uh, on YouTube. Um, again, I think it's super brave that he's keeping these really good jokes up on YouTube. Um, it, it, whatever it's worth it. Is, it. I definitely have a, have a watch. In, in, in you, really, is the truth. 
I know, it's true. We drive nice cars. We don't care about what wheel we're behind. We just want when we drive by for you to go, wait, 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 and then you get in the car, and then we get in you. That's what we want. Applause break. We get the... nice jobs. We work hard. We don't oh, care God, where we go every day. We just want you to be... I mean, he's just telling the truth. I mean, that's what we all want, boys. Am I right? Like, wait a minute. What do you do? And then we get in you. That's what we want. Well, I, that's why I, I mean, he, it's, there's so much truth in his comedy. I, I remember I bought a uh, 2006 Volkswagen Jetta because I knew that, uh, you know, that was going to help me get into women. So, I mean, this guy notices tr truth. No matter what we do so as funny. men, the real reason we're doing it is to get in your pussy. That shit is crazy, dude. Amen, brother. It's crazy, dude. All right. It's harsh, <laughs> but it's true, man. But here's the craziest part about that whole thing, all right? There's nothing in there. <laughs> oh. That's a good act out. Look at that. So he's sticking his fingers inside her vagina, dude. Oh, man. There is. That means that all men. Obviously, again, this is a. <laughs> he's being quite silly, as comedians do, implying that there's nothing inside a woman's vagina, so there's no reason to get in there. Um, but obviously, you know, in the, the, there's a whole. a lot of internal organs. All men want in life is nothing. <laughs> so that's the. Um, that is the punchline to the uh, Netflix is a joke compilation of the best of Chris D'Elia. Um, ev every single one of them, absolutely hilarious, worth checking out all 15 specials that he's put out. Um, if you guys like jokes about, you know, seducing women, um, going into the valley, lineups at Carl's Juniors, um, uh, look, asking people for elevators, uh, you know, where the elevators are, talking to friends, and, and telling everyone to go fuck themselves. Uh, you guys will really love the comedy of Chris D'Elia. He's one of the best working today. And uh, if you turn on a podcast, at least one in four will have him as a guest. So uh, the guy's on the top of his game, and I don't think these jokes need explaining, but I hope that this has really helped. Um, explain why uh, he's one of the best working comedians.